All right, first things first, I set out to get you some C-sharp regular expression benchmarks, and, well, I screwed up. I put a video together, wrote an article, posted it all, and some of the initial feedback said, wait a minute, this doesn't look quite right. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a Principal Software Engineering Manager at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my last video, which unfortunately I totally screwed up. Well, not totally, but some of the information and some of the assumptions that I was using to calculate my benchmarks for regular expressions was just wrong. I was very lucky to have a viewer very early on when the video was put up comment and say, wait a sec, this doesn't look quite right. These times look a little bit too fast given the amount of data that you're using a regular expression for. And they suggested maybe the match collection for regular expressions is lazy. In this video, I'm going to walk through what actually happened with those benchmarks. We'll see just how lazy the regular expressions are in C sharp, and I will attempt to redeem myself with this set of benchmarks. It's not going to be an 800x performance improvement, but it will still be pretty significant. Let's head over to Visual Studio, look at the regex and match collection classes that we have in C sharp. On my screen, I have the updated benchmark code, but it's very similar to what I had before. The first thing I want to start doing is looking at the regex class, and I want to look at the match collection that we have in particular. For context, what was being suggested is that once we do a regex matches method call, what's actually happening is nothing. We're just making a match collection, and it's kind of like how an iterator is lazy. It doesn't actually perform any of the work until we ask for the results. And we're going to go see if that's the case or not. So if I press F12 to jump into matches, you can see that the return type here is a match collection. And just a quick note, if you're looking in the top right of the screen here, you can see that this is the source link for the regex.match file. We can see that in the top left, we're operating in the system text regular expressions uh, namespace and uh, DLL here, right? So this is not my code, this is built in, so I'm pressing F12 once more to go into match collection. And I want to talk about how we can see whether or not this is lazy. And again, to repeat what I mean by lazy is that we're able to create a match collection without actually having collected all of the matches. What my benchmarks were assuming is that the match collection, when you go to construct it, has evaluated all of the matches that it needed to already. Now, the first thing that's a bit of a giveaway if we look at the match collection constructor is that it doesn't take in a list of matches of any kind. All that it's doing is taking in the regex object, the input string, and the start at. So this is a pretty good indicator that it's lazy, right? It doesn't mean necessarily that it's lazy because in the constructor, it might actually go do the evaluation. But if we look at the code from line 27 through 37, nope doesn't look like it. None of the code in here is actually going through and trying to process those matches. So in fact, we create the match collection without having done any matches at that point. This basically obsoletes and disproves any of the benchmarks that I was showing in my previous video. So first of all, I wanted to apologize for that. I did not know that the match collection itself was lazy. But if we explore a little bit more, right, just to kind of see how we go evaluate these things and whether or not we're dealing with an iterator or some other type of lazy behavior, if we go look at the count and maybe I'll jump back to the new benchmarks, I figured I want to start using something that will force evaluation. You can see that on all of these now, I'm doing a dot count, right? So dot count is here. It's in this benchmark. It's basically, if you look at the highlight on all of the ends of the lines here, there's a dot count on all of them, and I'm returning an integer type. So back to the match collection, why am I using count? Well, if we go look in the property for count, we can see ensure initialized. Kind of interesting. What does that do? Well, if we go through that, it will try to get a match at the max value if it has not got this flag yet called done, right? So what does get match do? Well, Inside here is where all of the magic happens, and it has this loop that's essentially going to try going through all of the matches and essentially force the evaluation for us. I wanted to show you this because in the previous benchmarks, yep, I was using a match collection because it's lazily evaluated. It's not doing any work except creating a new object reference. And now if I'm using dot count like I am in the current benchmarks, this will go force an evaluation of all of them. 
I did not want to go create a, a new iterator by doing dot any or dot count like the link method. So the method call instead of this property, because there's a bit of overhead for creating an iterator. And I didn't know if match collection was going to be an iterator in and of itself, but it turns out it's not. It just has this lazy loading behavior, not exactly like an iterator, which uses the yield return pattern with an I enumerable return type. And again, you can see like we're not doing that anywhere here, right? Like there is no iterator syntax using, like I said, yield return and I enumerable return type. So match collection is lazy. Match collection itself is not an iterator. It does have the ability to enumerate over it. But if we go back to these benchmarks now, we are using dot count. I'm not using, like I said, dot any or the link method dot count, just to show you very briefly, that would look like this. This would go create an iterator over matches and step through them. I don't need to do that because dot count, this property we just looked at, will in fact go enumerate all of those results. Okay, so this should be a pretty good update for us getting benchmark results now because what we're doing, <laughs> just like originally, we are doing things like creating the regex instance, right? This one is using the compiled flag. This one is not, but we're creating that new instance every time. These other ones are caching the regular expression. So I'm not going to spend all of the time going through the benchmark setup because the only difference between this video and the last video is this dot count. With that said, if you still want more information about the different scenarios that we're going through, I'd highly recommend checking out that previous video because the results will not be accurate, and I'll cover those in just a moment, but the setup and why we're looking at these different things, that will be valuable because the whole point of doing that original video was saying, hey, look, there's a bunch of different ways we can seemingly do the same thing. What's the difference when we go to do this? On my screen currently is the previous set of benchmark results. The results that we're about to go look at right after this are in the same order, but I wanted to show you the ratio column. What I wanted to call out in the last video is that if we look at the new line and the new compiled line, so that's lines two and three, and we go to the ratio column, it's pretty common that I see people are creating regular expression objects every time they want to go use them. And what I wanted to call out is that if you're doing that and you switch to just using the static method, you'll basically get a 100x performance improvement. It's pretty dramatic. And if you're the kind of person that was doing some research and you were looking at the compiled flag and going, oh man, we should totally use that for performance, gains if you were doing that every time you wanted to go run the regex and then you switch to just using the static method it's basically over an 800x performance improvement so these are two common ways that i see people misusing regular expressions and i was trying to say hey look here's how much faster it could be but that's just not the reality because that's not what these benchmarks were covering these benchmarks were only creating the regex object they were not doing the evaluation of the regular expression. So that's why these benchmarks are invalid. I just wanted to mention that they have some value. It's just not the value that I was trying to capture in the previous video. I'm going to jump over to these other benchmarks that I have, which are from the code I just showed you, which should be accurate. So let's walk through. We have the same baseline at the top with this static method call for the regex class and calling matches on it. And that's going to be a ratio of one because that's our baseline. I just wanted to start with something, right? If we look at an example where we're creating a new regular expression instance, every time we want to go do the matches, it's going to be a little bit faster, apparently, than the static method call. Whether or not this is a slight rounding error or they are in fact a little bit different, this is what the benchmarks came out to be. It's also worth mentioning that if you haven't gone and watched the previous video, what I am doing is looking for words that end in ing and ed in an ebook that was published. So there's about 22 or 2600 lines of text. So there are plenty of words in English in that text that end in ing and ed. So the important thing that we should be thinking about as we go through these benchmarks is the time to create the regex object versus the time it takes to go match. The previous benchmarks we looked at, they were not going and doing any matching like I thought they were. These ones are. 
So it's a little bit faster to create a new one every time than using the static method. So a quick scan shows us the static method is apparently the worst performer in this list. Doing a new instance every time is a little bit faster, but there's a huge performance improvement already for using the compiled flag, right? This third line down. It's a ratio 0.64. It's not quite half the time, but it's a lot faster. And if you think about why that's so interesting, we are creating a new regex object and we're compiling that regex. There's extra work that we have to do when we're using that regex. You would think that there's a lot of overhead for doing that. And we're going to see there's definitely some overhead, but it's not as much overhead as the speed gain that you get from using the compiled regex. So it does come out to be much faster. Now, forgetting the compiled flag again, and instead of making a new regex object every time we want to go match, if we just look at this cached row here, it's just a tiny bit faster. Again, this is potentially just a rounding error than making a new one every time. So what I gather from this one is that the overhead from creating that regex object is actually quite low compared to the time it would go take to match your regex pattern on that body of text. And something, again, to think about is that body of text is 22 to 2600 lines. If you were dealing with very short input strings to match on, the discrepancy here might be a lot bigger. Now, one of the biggest performance improvements we're going to see so far is if we look at cached and compiled. So we compile the regex just one time. That's going to bring us down to 0.32 on the ratio. That's about a 3x improvement on the performance. So if you were still wondering, well, if the regex compiled is so performant, is it really take that long to go compile it? Well, yeah, because if you look at the example before at 0.64, Sure, that's faster than the static method, right? That's definitely the case. But if you only had to compile it once, you cut that time in half again for these benchmarks. So it's definitely worth taking a cached version of when you compile a regex. So if you're trying to think about some optimizations you could include, that's definitely something you're going to want to consider. If we look at the last set of the benchmarks here, if you did watch the previous video, I was saying that the generated regular expressions that we get by using the attribute, those compiled regular expressions that we get should be cached automatically for us. So there should be basically no difference between using the cached versions here. And they also do use compiled built in. The documentation explicitly says both of these things. You shouldn't need to pass a compiled flag. It does it for you. And you shouldn't need to cache it yourself because it will do that for you as well. I did notice in the previous benchmarks a tiny little difference. But what we see in these ones is basically that the, those are rounding errors anyway. Same kind of thing here, right? They're basically all a ratio 0 0.32, 0 0.33 in this case, all approximately the same. And these come out to being the same performance of the cache compiled one, but that could very well be just because of the regular expression that I used. I highly recommend you go through the Microsoft documentation for just how powerful these generated regular expressions can be, because they truly do go generate the code for you ahead of time. You can debug it so you can technically step through that code, and it even has doc comments built up for you, which is, in my opinion, just super cool. But again, the big takeaway here is that these options at the bottom, so doing anything that's caching your regular expression, they are expensive to create, so it's beneficial to cache. And another thing is that using a compiled flag or using the, the, the attribute that does that compilation for you ahead of time is going to be what you want if you're after performance. Okay, so at this point, I should be in the clear, right? There should be nothing else that could possibly go wrong with these benchmarks. I've gone ahead and I've proven, I've proven that the match collection class is lazy. We know that. So I made sure that by doing dot count, everything's evaluated. So we should be comparing the time it takes to construct the regex object with the time it takes to go perform that evaluation and find all of those matches. It's got to be bulletproof, right? Well, not quite. There's one more thing that fortunately I caught or at least looked at before going and publishing my new article and going to record this video. So there's one thing I want to jump back to in the code and we can see what could possibly screw up these benchmarks. So fortunately, I remembered this when I was thinking back to my digital forensic days when I recall that there was some weird behavior with regular expressions and when we started to have too many regular expressions. And 
What could that possibly be? Well, it's hidden behind the scenes a little bit, but if we go to the static method matches, if I go into the definition of that, we have something very interesting here on line 179. And this says, regex cache, get or add this pattern. Can you see what the problem might be? Because I'm using the exact same pattern across all of the regular expressions. So what would that mean if I was trying to gauge the performance of creating a regex and the match time on top of that? Well, if it's already cached, we're not paying the performance penalty of going and creating that regex. So I was almost all the way through writing my article, feeling very confident that I finally got this right. And then I remembered. And then I saw this code, and then I went, oh crap, do I gotta do this all over again? What I did is we go back to program CS here, if I scroll to the top, there's this line of code that I commented out for us, so I didn't spoil this entire video, and we can see that there's this regex cache size property. We can set this cache size to zero, and it will turn off caching for us. If I step into here, you can see that there's actually code that if you go to set this at zero and we go a little bit deeper, you can technically clear the cache by setting it to zero. So that's kind of interesting, but there's this S underscore cache list list that gets used for caching. And what I ended up doing just to prove that we're not caching anything, it's a little bit tricky to explain, but uh, if I go put a breakpoint here and I'm going to press play and debug this, we're going to look at Visual Studio and how I can examine whether or not we cached anything. Okay, so my breakpoint is hit after the cache size is equal to zero. What I didn't include when debugging this for you is that in my tests, I created a new benchmark basically right after setting the cache size to zero because that's the way these benchmarks are going to work. I'm going to set a cache size to zero, then my benchmarks are going to run creating regular expressions. So I'm not including that line. I started recording and figured I'd just say it out loud. But the interesting thing, if I go to the watch here, this debug watches, by the way, I do have videos on this. If you're not familiar with how to use debug watches, you can check those out. But I've added a watch here. And to explain what's going on, I'm getting the type of regex cache Then I'm asking for the field. So this is all reflection that's called S cache list. Technically, we can't see this thing from outside the class, but we can use reflection to go look at it. So if you remember all of those people that were telling you, hey, reflection's bad, never use it. Yeah, there's a lot of places you shouldn't use reflection, but here's a really awesome use case for it. From there, we go asking for the static and non-public field called S cache list, right? Then I ask to get the value, and because it's static, we pass in a null. What I can do is if I press this little symbol here to evaluate, we get a list that's empty. Now, in this case, I didn't create a regular expression, but like I was saying, when I was trying to prove this to myself, even after making a regular expression, after setting the cache size to zero, it does in fact not cache it. That means that the behavior I want is right here. If I set the cache size to zero, it will not cache or safe. The reason that I had to do this in a watch is that I'm having a very difficult time getting access to the regex cache type. And for some reason in the watch, it's able to see it. It's an internal class. If you didn't notice it, when I go back to this code here, regex cache, it's internal. We should not be able to see this from the outside of the assembly. However, we totally can when we put it in a watch. That's how I was able to get the type. When I tried writing it in code, I don't have an opportunity to pass in the binding flags for non-public. So I did this in a watch. I just wanted to explain to you that I could prove to myself setting this to zero will not cache. But how does that affect the results? Well, fortunately, I added this in my blog article because I said I don't want to screw it up one more time. The reality is that the caching didn't really have any effect at all. The benchmark results came out to be almost identical in the second run. I think one of the numbers was off by like 0.01 in one case here, but the benchmark results are basically identical. So the caching of the regular expressions in this set of benchmarks, at least, was not contributing to a difference in the performance characteristics of the benchmarks. 
With all of that said, we can see that there are some performance optimizations to be had with regular expressions in C Sharp. If you recall what I said earlier, cache the regex you're making, compile it if you can, and in the best case scenario, you're able to use the new attribute for regular expressions that allows the compiler to do that ahead of time for you. That will, in theory, give you the best results. Something else I wanted to call out, which is the whole point of doing this video in the first place, and the original video, it was not to tell you, here's the best way to go make regular expressions. What I wanted to show you is that if you're curious about something, you should be able to go benchmark it and explore it. For me, this was a very interesting turn of events when I tried to put this information out, right? I was completely wrong, but from the first video, I learned about this attribute for the regular expressions and what Microsoft is able to do behind the scenes. So that was a really cool learning. I'm very glad I put that video together. But what was even cooler was that I had someone give me constructive criticism, call out an error, didn't do it in a way that made me feel bad. I was a little embarrassed, of course, I think anyone would be, but it's a great opportunity for me to show you, look, it's okay to mess up, right? I'm still making videos. I didn't stop. It's not like my, my YouTube career ended. I'm still learning stuff. So after 10 plus years of using C Sharp with regular expressions, I had no idea the match collection was lazy. That's completely new to me. So I thought that was super cool. And then going through this, not only did I learn that, but I got to go re-explore the regular expression cache. So some takeaways, right? Just keep in mind that it's okay to be wrong. It's great to go experiment and learn things. And if you notice that someone's made an error, there's an easy way to go tell them that without trying to be rude about it, right? We're all just trying to learn and help each other. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you can forgive me for my mess up in the previous video, and I hope this one was still interesting too. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.